Welcome back, kindergartners and first graders. I'm so happy to see all your smiling faces, ready to read and visualize. You got it. All week, we've been working on making meaning lessons and visualizing. My name is Miss Brandt, and I'm a kindergarten teacher right here in Seattle at Rising Star Elementary School. Go Firebirds! I'm so happy to see so many of you joining us today for the first time and so many kids coming back for maybe the second or third or even fourth or fifth time. So today I wanted to share with you before we get started how I've heard and seen so many students using their extension activities to keep working on their visualizing and independent reading and vocabulary even when they're not here in class with us. Your teachers and I are so proud of you. Keep it up. Today, for our lesson, you're going to need a blank piece of paper and something to write with. And as always, you guessed it, a turn and talk partner. Remember, a turn and talk partner can be someone who's at home with you in your family, like a parent or a sibling. It could be a pet, like your dog or cat or fish. It could be an imaginary friend. It could be a stuffed animal. And you can always pick up your phone and give me a call just like this to tell me what you think. And for those of you who've been watching and being in class all week, you're gonna remember our turn and talk partners that I use here with me. Tiggy the tiger and Saki the sock. Saki's gotten a lot less shy since last time and she's so happy to be here with you. So is Tiggy. You wanna say hi? All right, readers, let's get to work. I can tell you're ready. So today, we're going to reread the book Sunflower House by Eve Bunting. Remember that good readers like to read books more than once to help us practice visualizing and making pictures and also to help us understand better. But I know some of you are ready for a challenge. So before I read, I'm wondering, what do you remember that happens in this book? If you're joining us for the first time today, don't worry. But if you remember, go ahead and think and then turn and talk to your partner or give me a call. What happened in this book? You got it, readers. So many of you called me and told me that you remembered that Sunflower House was about a child who plants sunflower seeds and watches them grow. One of you even remembered that the word mammoth means giant or very big, and that these sunflowers grew into mammoth sunflowers. And then I also heard a student remember that the flowers started to fall over but then that the birds helped them spread around for the next year so they could grow again. Excellent job remembering. Give yourself a pat on the back. If you're joining us today for the first time, that's okay. I'm gonna do a quick picture walk of our book, Sunflower House, so that you might remember a little bit or learn a little bit about what it looks like. And remember, if you're ready for a challenge and you've got this, go ahead and turn around or close your eyes so that you can just visualize and not see the pictures. And if you wanna look with me, that's fine too. So remember in Sunflower House, we saw this picture of so many sunflowers growing and a child and their dog laughing and playing in the sunflower fields. We also saw this picture here where the sunflowers started to fall over and the yellow started to go away. And we saw lots of children's feet. Remember that? Those were the child who planted the seeds. Those were his friends. At the end, remember how we saw no more sunflowers? That's because you're right. The birds came and carried the seeds away for next spring. All right, if you had covered your eyes or turned around, go ahead and turn back. Way to challenge yourself. We're gonna get started reading. Now, I'm gonna read to you, and this time I'm only gonna stop two times to ask you what you're picturing or visualizing. After we read today, you're gonna be drawing what you saw in your mind and writing about it too. So I want you to pay really close attention today so that you can really work on your mental pictures or visualizing, all right? Okay, here we go. Are you ready, Taggy? 
Ready? And Saki's ready too. All right. Sunflower House by Eve Bunting. Go ahead and close your eyes if that helps you, or just look down so you can focus your brain on making pictures. First, I pull out all the weeds, and then I sow my sunflower seeds. I'm seeing kids remember that sow means to plant them. It says to set them in a line, but Dad says round and round is fine. I give them water every day and shoo the pesky birds away. Remember shoo meant to scare them away and pesky meant the birds were a little bit annoying. Go eat the berries on the tree. These sunflower seeds belong to me. Okay, what are you picturing here, readers? Go ahead and think for a moment and then turn and tell your partner, what do you picture here? Tiggy told me that he pictured a child waving their arms and saying, go away birds, go away. And the words, go eat the berries on the tree, helped him picture that. You can give me a connection if you agree with Tiggy, or maybe you pictured something else. Great work, keep it up. The package says they're guaranteed. A mammoth flower grows from each seed. My friend Bernice says, there's no way. You don't know everything, I say. Wait! The stems poke out, all ringed around, a pale green circle in the ground. They're growing tall, they're growing fast. Their petals open wide and spread, a golden roof above my head. My friends come rushing down to see the sunflower house hand grown by me. There's lots of room inside for three. Mom brings us cookies and iced tea. But mom and dad can't fit at all. They're much too big and wide and tall. All summer long, the house is ours. We play in it for hours and hours. It's a castle, it's a cage. We're jungle beasts that roar and rage. My friends sleep out with me one night, bundled up and snuggled tight. Moon shadows shiver on the ground. The sunflowers whisper all around. Wow, I'm seeing so many of you making connections to this part of the story. Good work. They whisper songs of heat and rain and things too secret to explain. I see the stars play peekaboo and wish a wish that can't come true. One day, the leaves are tinged with brown. Remember, tinged means a little bit. The leaves are tinged with brown. A flower comes tumbling, rumbling down. Next day, some more bend over, fall. And now it's not a house at all. Ooh, I'm seeing some of you go like this to show how that child might be feeling. Yeah, good job visualizing that. We tie it up with strings and sticks, but it's impossible to fix. Impossible means can't do it, it can't be fixed. What do you picture here? Go ahead and think for a moment. What do you picture here? And turn and tell your partner. What do you picture here? I agree, Saki. Saki told me that she's picturing the kids feeling really sad because the flowers have fallen down. But Saki says, don't worry, because she remembers what happens. It's gone. There's nothing we can do, not even with the glue all's glue. Wait! There's still the puffy middle part that's filled with seeds enough to start 
another sunflower house next spring with walls, a roof, and everything. It's neat to think when something's gone, a part of it goes on and on. It's such a super duper plan. We pick out all the seeds we can. Our pockets bulge. Remember that means stick out. Our pockets bulge. The blue jays come, the sparrows, crows, they all take some. Yeah, I'm seeing some of you pretend like you're those birds coming in. We still have lots and lots to share. Now be aware, prepare, take care. Ooh, I'm seeing many friends remember that. Be aware means pay attention. That was one of our vocabulary words. Now be aware, prepare, take care. Next summer, they'll be everywhere. Wow, all right, if your eyes were closed, you can go ahead and open them and join us back here. Great, great work visualizing while I read that story and using your brains to make pictures in your head while I read. Now, we're gonna do something a little bit different today. I'm gonna actually tell you that I want you to draw with your blank piece of paper and pen or pencil what you visualized. So when you heard that story, I want you to think, what part will you draw about? And I have a challenge for you. If you feel like you can do it, I want you to start to add words, maybe a sentence. Maybe some first graders and even kindergartners are ready to add more and more words, maybe two or three or four sentences. So you're gonna think in your head, what part of the story will you draw and write about today on your blank piece of paper? Go ahead and think for a moment. And then I want you to call me and tell me what part of the story will you draw about, okay? All right, think. All right, now give me a call. Wow, so many good ideas, readers. I heard a kindergartner tell me that they were going to draw and write about the sunflower house looking like a castle. I heard a first grader tell me that they were going to draw and write lots and lots about how the birds came down to get the sunflower's middle part. And I even heard Tiggy and Saki talking to each other. They were partners. And they told each other, what did you say again, Saki? Oh yeah. Saki said that she was gonna draw the part where the sunflowers are in a circle. She pictured lots of giant mammoth sunflowers in a circle. All right, so I want you to go ahead and get your blank piece of paper and your pen or pencil and start to draw. While you're drawing, I'm gonna be thinking about what I would draw also. And in just a little bit, I'll show you what I'm gonna draw too. But I wanna challenge you to get started on your own today. So go ahead and start to draw what you pictured when you heard this story. I want you to remember too, while you're still drawing, you can just listen to me, that it's okay. The pictures that you make in your mind are more important than what you draw. I just want you to do your best and write about what you pictured or visualized.
All right, I'm gonna tell you to stop and pause for just one moment. I'm wondering what words or phrases helped you decide what to draw and helped you add more when you were drawing. All right, think about it. What words really helped you? And then you can give me a call or turn and talk to your partner. What words helped you? I just heard so many students on the phone tell me that the word mammoth helped them. I agree, mammoth, remember it means giant or very big. They are drawing giant sunflowers and the word mammoth helped them. All right, I want you to keep drawing and writing now too. For those of you who are feeling like maybe you're a little stuck and you don't know how to start, that's okay. Now I'm gonna go and draw a little bit too so you can get an idea and a place to start. If you've already got your idea and you're going, don't worry, keep on going. This is just if you need a little bit of help. So, when I was visualizing during the story Sunflower House, I'll make sure I wrote the word Sunflower House, the words up here, because that was the title of our book. Sunflower House, okay? And I was visualizing lots of sunflowers and I drew some of those stems already. I was visualizing bright yellow sunflowers in a circle, and the words that helped me were really sunflowers, circle, and even the word mammoth, because these were giant. So you should still be drawing while I'm drawing too. And this can help you if you were feeling a little stuck. Maybe you wanna draw what I drew and then add more. That's right, keep going on your own drawing. Oh my goodness, I'm hearing some students think and read my mind. I was gonna ask you, what can you write? What could you write about your picture? And I saw students already starting to write and I'm seeing students write more and more. That's amazing. Go ahead and think for a minute. I want you to stop and think. What could you write? What words could you write that help explain your picture? Think about it. All right. You can sh actually just shout out the words to me. Yeah, good. I heard some more mammoth. I heard some more words like blue jays, sparrows, crows. Excellent. And I want you to make sure you're actually writing those words on your page. Remember, you can just do your best guess spelling. All right. I'm going to do some work too. All right, readers and writers, we're gonna pause for one more moment. And I want you to think about your picture. Is there anything you added to your drawing and words that wasn't even in the story? If you haven't yet, that's okay. Let's add a little bit more detail. You can go ahead and shout out again. What did you draw that wasn't in your story? Tell me, it wasn't in the story. Wow, I heard that readers drew green grass I heard readers who drew lots of friends playing, and I also heard readers who wrote about how the sunflowers maybe felt sad when they started to fall over. Amazing work. I added over here a sun, and I put an S for sun, because in my mind, I was thinking about sun being there when the sunflowers were growing. All right, readers, I know that you are still working so hard on your drawings and writing about what you visualized, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop you for now because our time together is coming to an end and I wanna make sure we have time. So, for those of you who were feeling a little bit stuck with the writing part, or maybe students who weren't sure what to write yet, I'm gonna show you what I will write here for my work. So I labeled my pictures because good writers and readers always label. I put an S here for sunflower and a S here for sun. <gasps> for a challenge, you can even write out the whole word and I'm seeing some of you do that right now. Now here, I drew the giant mammoth sunflowers in a circle. So I'm gonna write that too. I will write 
the, remembering to have a capital letter and a finger space in between words. The mammoth. Mm, that's right. M, mammoth. Ooh, and I'm seeing some students, remember, they could check their extension activities to, for how to spell this word. Don't worry if you don't have it. You can do your best guess if you're putting mammoth in your writing. The mammoth sunflowers. The mammoth sunflowers grew, and I drew them growing in a circle. Because I heard the words in a circle is all right. Let me reread what I wrote. The mammoth sunflowers grew in a circle. I'm seeing some more of you right now on your writing. Remember to put a period at the end and remember to have capital at the beginning and finger spaces in between. Now, because good writers don't just stop when they think they're done, they remember to add more detail, I'm gonna do that too. First, I'm gonna add some grass to my picture, even though the book didn't say it was there, because I pictured that in my head, like one of you said. I'm also gonna add one more label. I'm remembering that these green parts of the flower are called stems, and that also starts with a S, you got it. I'm gonna label all the parts of my picture. <gasps> g -g Grass starts with a G. Wow, now I've added more detail I wrote about what I pictured and I drew it. And remember, I don't need to be too worried if my picture isn't perfect. What's important is that we're practicing visualizing and writing and drawing about it. Okay, I see some of you are still working to finish up and don't worry, you're gonna have time after we're done in class today to finish up your drawing and your writing. And I'm very impressed with how many of you are working for a challenge and writing more and more. All right. Last thing we're gonna do today together is talk a little bit more about our independent reading. Remember, good readers are always thinking about what they're reading and practicing visualizing. All right, Saki and Taggy, I'm gonna put you down for a minute because we gotta go back over here and look at our thinking about my reading chart. Now, oh, it was actually over here. Thinking about my reading. So we're remembering that good readers are thinking about our reading. What is happening in my book? Do I understand what I am reading? Can I read most of the words? And I'm seeing so many of you connect to this. You think about this all the time when you're reading and that makes you all such good readers. Today, I'm gonna read a little bit more of my independent reading book, Jamaica and Brianna, for you. Some of you who were here in our earlier lessons, remember, before I read, I predicted, based on this cover, I said, I think these girls are going to be friends. And then I just read the first couple pages in our last lesson. Don't worry if you weren't here, I can retell, because good readers can understand what's happening and retell in their own words. Jamaica didn't want to wear the boots that her mom said she had to wear. She thought that they were ugly and old, but her mother said they're fine for now. Let's keep reading just a little bit. Jamaica slopped through the wet snow to the bus stop. She looked at a tiny hole on the toe of Aussie's right boot. Maybe the hole would get bigger, then she would have to get new boots. Jamaica's friend Brianna was already there. Hi, she shouted, then she said, Jamaica, you're wearing boy boots. <gasps> I'm gonna stop there. What is happening in my book? It seems like Jamaica's friend, Brianna, was making fun of her boots. She was saying, those are boy boots. I visualize Jamaica feeling sad. Brianna's boots were pink with fuzzy white cuffs. They weren't brand new, but they still looked good. Jamaica shrugged. She wished that Brianna didn't talk so loud everyone would notice. At school, Jamaica jerked the boots off. The hole in the toe ripped wider. She could poke her finger all the way through now. You should be more careful, her mother said when Jamaica got home. I'm afraid it can't be fixed. I'm gonna pause and think, can I read most of these words? 
Yes, I can. I know it's a just right book. And here, what's happening now? Ooh, I'm hearing some of you shout it out. You're right, there's a problem. Jamaica's old boot has a hole in it. So later on today, when you're doing your independent reading, I'm gonna keep reading this book to find out what happens. And I wanna make sure that you are all doing those things good readers do when you're reading on your own too. So, kindergartners and first graders, I wanna give you such a big compliment. You have been working so hard all week on our Making Meaning lessons and challenging yourself to visualize and use words to help explain what you pictured. And I'm so, so proud of you. So give yourself a big hug and tell yourself, good job, nice. And then give me a big high five. Nice work, readers. All right, so remember, when you read your Just Right book, you're gonna do what good readers do and think about what you're reading. Make sure it makes sense and you understand. So I'm very, very proud of you and your teachers are so proud of you too. Keep up the good work, readers and writers, and we'll see you next time. And remember, you can always find a Just Right book online at the Student Portal. Bye.